Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. In today's What's For Dinner video, I'm sharing three delicious fall recipes for you and one of them is perfect for Thanksgiving leftovers. So I'm sharing with you a Thanksgiving pot pie, cheese and vegetable twist, which is very impressive by the way, spaghetti squash casserole, and a bonus recipe, my pumpkin pie smoothie that some of you have been asking about. So let's jump right in. Okay, so for the Thanksgiving turkey pot pie, we are going to use stuffing as the crust. So if you have leftovers from Thanksgiving, let's say you already have the stuffing made, you already have the turkey, just use all of these things and combine them in this pie, it's pretty neat. If you don't have the stuffing made, you can just take the stuffing, and it's about two cups, and soften it, moisten it with some chicken stock, mix it up, and you're going to press it into the sides of a deep dish pie pan. Now please note that I will have all of the printable recipes for this video linked in my corresponding blog post. So you're going to press the stuffing up the sides of your deep dish pie pan and bake that in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes so that it gets cooked a little bit more. Now we're going to chop up our broccoli and I wanted to share this knife with you. It is the Mitsumoto Sakari 8 inch Japanese Kiritsuke chef knife. This knife is so amazing. I love the handle on the knife and I'm featuring it in my holiday gift guide. So many people have asked me about knife recommendations. I can totally recommend this brand. It is the most high quality knife that I have ever used. So I'm using that to chop up the broccoli here. If you have frozen broccoli, you could definitely use that, just thaw it out. Or if you have cooked broccoli, that's fine too. I like the crunch from the fresh broccoli, so that's what I'm using here. Then in a bowl, I'm combining some cream cheese with some gravy and whisking that all together. And then I'm adding some shredded cheese and my cubed turkey. I didn't have turkey for this recipe, so I used a rotisserie chicken, which worked just as well. Then I'm adding my broccoli, and you can season this with salt and pepper, and this is the filling. So when your stuffing pie crust comes out of the oven, you can fill it with chicken or turkey filling, and then you're going to top it with mashed potatoes. So you can see how if you already have all of these things made, it's really easy to assemble. So I top it with some mashed potatoes, and of course I drizzle butter on top to make it even better. And then we're gonna to finally top it with some crispy onions. This gives it a nice crunchy texture. So you're going to bake this in the oven at 350 degrees for around 25 minutes and it comes out and it's delightful it's a crowd pleaser the whole family loves this and this is a very innovative and cozy way to reuse your thanksgiving leftovers serve this with a side salad and some bread rolls and you're good to go okay the next recipe is so impressive to look at you can make this and take it to a holiday party that you're going to this year or you could have it for dinner like we did so this is a cheese and vegetable twist and you use the uh, Pillsbury Crescent Rolls for this. Okay, so we have two eggs that you are going to whisk together with a fork, and to that I'm adding some cream cheese and some shredded cheese. I'm using Italian cheese here, but you could use Swiss cheese or cheddar even, whatever you like. You're going to combine that until it's creamy and smooth, and then you're going to add your vegetables. So this is a vegetarian dish, not vegan, but vegetarian. And so I'm adding some mushrooms here, I'm adding some more chopped fresh broccoli because I like that crunch, but you could add cooked broccoli if you like. Then I add some cherry tomatoes and some chopped green onions. And you're going to mix this all together and add salt and pepper. Okay, so now's the part where we deal with the crescent rolls. So you're going to take two of those crescent roll tins and separate each of the triangles. Then you're going to lay it out in what I would call a sun pattern with uh, the larger part of the triangle in the center and then the tip facing outward. And as you can see here, I am simply layering them one over the other, and you're going to create a circle in the center, and it's going to go all the way around. Once you do that, you could put your vegetable filling in, in a little ring around the center of that sun creation. It's so hard to describe this, <laughs> but hopefully the visuals are helping you. Then once that's finished, you are going to wrap each of the tips of the crescent rolls around to create this beautiful roll. Now I got this recipe off the craft website. So this is a popular recipe of theirs and I will link their recipe down below as well. You're going to bake this in the oven until it's golden brown. 
And this is so delicious. It's very cheesy and vegetable-y. And then there's that crust from the crescent rolls. And it looks beautiful too. So again, this would be a wonderful thing to take to a holiday party. So here we served it with a side salad with some poppy seed dressing, some more of those cherry tomatoes and some croutons. And this is absolutely fabulous. And I love this dish. The last dinner recipe I'm sharing with you is the spaghetti squash casserole. This is a copycat dish for a recipe that is served at True Food Kitchen, which I used to love to go to when I lived in Santa Monica. And it's the perfect fall recipe. So you're going to take a spaghetti squash and cut it in half and take out all of the seeds, place it upside down in a baking dish, and put some water in there. You're going to bake this until the squash is done. So it usually takes about an hour or so. Again, I will leave the recipe cards in my corresponding blog post. So for this recipe, I'm going to use some sweet Italian style chicken sausage, the Rayo's homemade marinara sauce, spinach, mushrooms, but you know, you could really put whatever you want in this. You can make this vegetarian and not put sausage in it. You could use an Alfredo instead of a marinara. Do you see what I mean? It's very easy to customize this dish. So this is what the spaghetti squash looks like when it comes out of the oven. You're going to scoop that into a large bowl. And the reason why it is called spaghetti squash is because when you scoop it out, the strands look like spaghetti. Okay, so let's do our filling. And I did this while the spaghetti squash was baking. You're gonna take some onion and garlic and saute that in olive oil in your pan. I'm using the 360 degree cookware. You can see I use these pans a lot because there's those marks on the pan, <laughs> which I do need to scrub to get out. On top of that, I'm adding my mushrooms and I'm cooking everything until it's super soft and caramelized. Then I'm cooking the sausages separately on the La Crusette grill pan. To the mushroom and onion mixture, I'm adding a lot of spinach here. This cooks down, of course. This is the vegetable mixture. So to the spaghetti squash now, I'm adding the Rayo's marinara sauce, which is my favorite sauce, it's so good. And I mix that up. I add the chopped cooked sausage to it, and then I add the vegetable mixture, and I mix it all together with some salt and pepper. And you're gonna put this in a greased uh, casserole dish, and you can top it with some cheese. So I'm topping it with some white cheddar cheese here. And then you bake this for a little bit more in the oven. It doesn't need to be too long because pretty much everything's already cooked. So I would say around 30 more minutes or so to get that marinara really cooked. Then you scoop it onto a plate, serve it with some extra cheese, and this is the most delicious meal. For those of you who like to eat low carb, this is a great meal for that. So the spaghetti squash is the star of the show here. This is one of my favorite fall recipes. I absolutely love it. In one of my recent intermittent fasting what I eat in a day videos, I shared my pumpkin pie smoothie with you and some of you asked for the recipe, so I'm going to share it with you right now. So in your blender, and this is a Vitamix, you take a banana and some organic pumpkin. I use about half of a can there. Then I add some whole fat Greek yogurt and some unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Then I take a large dollop of almond butter, even though here I'm using peanut butter, but I prefer almond butter for that. I like to put flax seeds in my smoothies, so I put some flax seeds in there. And if you want to sweeten this, you can use um, stevia or any sort of sweetener that you like to use, but it doesn't really need sweetener. Then I put some pumpkin pie spice and that's what really gives it a kick. And I blend it all together and that's it. You put it in a beautiful glass and it's a delicious pumpkin pie flavored smoothie. And I've really been enjoying this a lot this year. You could tweak this so much. You could put cinnamon in it. You could put whatever you want in it, really, to make it um, have the flavor of the pumpkin pie that you love so much. So that is the pumpkin pie smoothie. And those are the recipes for this week. I really hope that you enjoyed this What's For Dinner video. If you like these videos, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know how you like to use your Thanksgiving leftovers. Let us know what you do in the comments down below too. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Daily Connoisseur. Keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.